All right. So if you were at my press conference just a couple of weeks ago, it's not going to surprise you to hear me say, uh, I don't think it's fair that Coach Summerall is only going to get questions from media members. I mean, that wasn't, <laughs> that's not how it was at my press conference. We're going to have to talk about that with somebody. <laughs> Oh, good morning. Thank you so much for being here. It's a great day for the Green Wave family. Uh, we have an opportunity to welcome Coach Summerall and his family uh, back to the Tulane family. Uh, when I stood here just a, a couple of short weeks ago, I had a, a list of people to thank. Uh, and I remember saying that when you have a certain level of achievement, there are a ton of people that are behind that, that are helping to make that possible. Uh, and with something like hiring a head coach, uh, that certainly fits into that pattern uh, as well. Uh, so I want to start by thanking uh, President Fitz uh, for his leadership of the university, uh, for his support of the athletics department. Uh, everything that we do and are able to do is because of what you provide for us. So thank you so much uh, for being who you are and for the leadership that you provide uh, to this great institution. Uh, I want to thank Patrick Norton. Uh, certainly a partner uh, through this search from day one. From the very beginning, uh, all the way until the end, uh, we worked hand in hand to make sure that we got the very best coach uh, that we could get for Tulane University. Uh, Courtney Gaucher, uh, Patrick is right. Everything that we needed, everything that needed to be done, all the information, uh, all be the behind the scenes work, uh, all the things that uh, we needed to have done, when we needed to have them done, uh, Courtney did that, as well as the great knowledge that he had uh, from a football standpoint and with coaches, we were able to talk and collaborate and have a great partnership uh, in that regard. Uh, to Drew and Todd Turner with uh, CSA, uh, they were the search firm that we used in the search. They were great from day one in helping us put this together. Uh, and then to all the staff members, uh, both inside and outside of athletics, uh, that helped us to pull this day together, there are people who did tremendous things that I'm probably not even aware of uh, that helped us to be able to get to this spot. So thank you for everyone who had anything to do with helping us get to this point. So when this position came open uh, just a short week ago, we knew that we needed to move quickly, uh, but most importantly for us, we wanted to make the right choice. We needed to get this right, get it right for our student athletes, get it right for our university, get it right for all of you who support uh, the football program. Uh, we reached out to CSA, Drew Turner specifically, to begin to discuss some of the logistics of the search. And I can remember during that conversation, he asked, tell me what you're looking for in your next head coach. Tell me the, the qualifications or uh, just what you would ideally like to see. And so I can remember sharing with him uh, that we wanted to have a, a head coach. We were certainly going to be open to those uh, who had been coordinators, but Ultimately, we would like to have a head coach. Uh, we would like to have uh, someone who was a proven winner, uh, someone who had had success. Uh, it was also very important to us that we had someone who had demonstrated care and concern and quite honestly love for student athletes. That was tremendously important to us. Uh, next, we talked about the importance that recruiting played, uh, and we knew we needed someone who could recruit the city the state, and specifically the Southeast. Uh, and then someone who has some degree of familiarity uh, with New Orleans and with Tulane and the uniqueness of who we are and the culture here. And so as we had that conversation, we began to just look at uh, our short list and be able to uh, try to formulate uh, where we wanted to go. And through those conversations, it just became clear that John Summerall came to the very top of that list very quickly. Why? Well, uh, John has been the head coach at Troy University for the past two years and has showed uh, tremendous leadership in what he's been able to accomplish. What has he been able to accomplish? Well, if you look at him taking over a team that in the three previous years had won five games each year, then going over the next two years, 23 and four, uh, during those two seasons, which is tied for third most in the country uh, when it comes to wins. He is a former conference coach of the year. He is a two-time uh, conference champion, I believe, 
uh, Tulane and the University of Michigan are the only uh, football programs that have won conference championships uh, the last two years. Uh, two-time finalists for the Eddie Robinson Coach of the Year uh, on a national level. Uh, two-time bowl qualifier, currently on an 11-game uh, winning streak. Uh, last year, finished with a 10-game winning streak. Uh, in other words, very successful, has done great things where he has been. Great passion for student athletes. That's one of the things that came across when we had a chance to be able to sit down and talk. Uh, just his love and his passion and his care, the investment that he's made uh, in those young men, uh, the character of the young men that he's brought in and his personal character in investing the time to make sure that they would have success once they left the university. He has played and worked at the University of Kentucky, uh, worked at Troy University, as well as Ole Miss, and he's originally from Huntsville, Alabama. So we knew that he had the connections uh, within the Southeast uh, to be able to help from a recruiting standpoint. Uh, and then he previously served as a defensive coordinator here at Tulane, so we knew uh, he was very familiar with uh, Tulane and with the city of New Orleans, which was very important to us. In other words, he checked every box for us with this search. But additionally, just the great character, the great vision, the passion, and the work ethic came across so clearly when we had a chance to be able to sit down and have a conversation. Uh, being in that room with him, I think we were scheduled to be there for about 90 minutes. Uh, we ended up spending about two and a half hours together uh, just because it was um, just great being able to listen to someone who had that much passion about what he has a chance to be able to do and that much passion about coming here to Tulane. That came across from the very beginning. He loved the time that he and his family spent here previously, and he was looking forward to the opportunity to be able to come back. So the bottom line, we got our guy. And so it's now my privilege to help welcome our guy back to Uptown. Please help me welcome Coach John Sumrall. David's a little bit taller than me. You have to lower this. Um, uh, thank you for that warm welcome. Um, I'm honored to be the head coach at Tulane University. Um, yeah. Sorry, I've got coach's voice. We just finished the season, so I got to sip water every now and then. Um, I'd like to thank the Tulane administration um, for this process and how they went about it. And it was enjoyable to hear their vision for this football program. Um, President Fitz, Patrick Norton, David Harris, Courtney Gaucher, the opportunity to visit with them and, and to hear what they wanted this place to be um, really stirred up an emotion and passion in me that made me more aware that this was the right opportunity at the right time. I'd also like to thank the Board of Trustees um, for allowing me this opportunity. Um, before I move into the football side of things, it's pretty important for me to acknowledge my family. I would not be here without them. It starts with my wife, Jenny. Um, she's the head coach's head coach. Um, she keeps me organized at home. Uh, coaching is a calling. It's not a profession, it's not a job. It is a calling, it is a way of life. Uh, and my wife allows me uh, to do a passion um, that is almost, uh, it's a career, but it's a hobby to me. And I don't ever feel like I go to work a day. My wife, we got four young kids. She goes to work every day. Uh, I get to go invest in young men and pursue championships daily. And nothing I do would be possible without her support. And yeah, thank you all.
Thank you, Jenny. Uh, our children, uh, Sam and Sadie, who are right here next to Jenny in the front row, they are 10. Uh, they were born here in the city of New Orleans. Um, they were born at Oshner, and I'll never forget coaching here at Tulane um, and them being in my office as infants and coming to visit for lunch on a Sunday after church uh, just so I could see them for a few minutes. Um, so very um, proud of them, and they're, they're welcome back home to them too. Um, so Sam and Sadie, and then Stella, our seven-year-old, um, she might be the toughest one in the bunch. She's got a little rattlesnake in her. And then Sayla, uh, our youngest five-year-old, um, she's got, probably got the biggest personality. And I don't know if you guys interpret other languages around here or not, but in the Hebrew language, Sayla means to pause and reflect. I've decided to stop with her. My mom and dad, George and Sandra Sumrall, um, their unwavering support in every step of my development as a child. Uh, my dad's tearing up. He's going to make me tear up. But they have sacrificed so much uh, for me in every step of my life. Thank you. Um, my in-laws, Steve and Lynn Nixon, uh, just great supporters. Um, They've been along for this coaching journey and this ride. I think when uh, I asked Steve if, Jenny, if I could have Jenny's hand in marriage, I think he thought, where are you going to take my daughter? You know, and um, so thank you all for being here today. <laughs> the last family member I have that I want to acknowledge is my brother Joe. Um, he's my biggest fan. Uh, he has... Um, in this coaching career or my playing career, when things have gone good, he's always told me how great I was. And when things have gone bad, he still told me how great I was. Um, unlike my father and my son, Sam, who they have no problem telling me when we don't play very well. But Joe, thank you for always being there for me. And before I look ahead, I need to take one moment to look back, and I'd like to thank Troy University. Um, they, they afforded me the opportunity to be a first-time head coach. They took a shot on me when maybe some people wouldn't. And uh, I was an unproven head coach at the time because I had never been one. And they gave me the opportunity to take on that role, and I will never forget it. Um, the leadership there, Dr. Jack Hawkins, Athletic Director Brent Jones, and the Board of Trustees there, they treated my, my family like family, and I am forever grateful for the way they treated us and uh, owe them dearly for the opportunities they have provided me. Um, yeah, you can applaud them, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to thank my staff at Troy. Um, won't address who, who of them will be with us yet. I don't know all those details at this time, but I'd like to thank them for their hard work. And then most importantly, um, I'd like to thank the student athletes. Um, those young men, they're, uh, they are forever family. We do life with the young men that we coach. Uh, the way I coach is it is a uh, transformational relationship, not a transactional relationship. It's not about what can we just get out of a player. It's what can we do for a player and how can we serve them and love them. And the young men at Troy University, uh, they know I'm always only a phone call away if they need anything in their life, ever. Um, and I'd like to thank the fans and the community of Troy at large for what they did for us. Um, so thank you to Troy. Uh, why Tulane? We can look ahead now. Why Tulane? The opportunity to coach at a world-class academic institution that pursues excellence in all things, including football. That resides in the city of New Orleans in Uptown. It's got a vibrant culture, and it's full of life. You know, if you're juiceless, you're useless, and this city's got a lot of juice. <laughs> the commitment to football has been made very clear, and I believe in what lies ahead is big. This program, as the head coach here, as I addressed 
in my previous stop, it will always be about the players. It will be players first. Last time I checked, if there were no student athletes and there were no players, there would be no football coaches. They wouldn't need me. This job's not about me. It's about others. And I will serve the young men in our program in every way possible, academically, on the field, socially, character, spiritually, leadership. It's about whole person development. We will do life with the young men that we coach. One of the greatest honors as a coach, young men that are here today, that I had the privilege of being a part of when they played here. And then the text messages that I've received, they go back the span of almost 20 years now, which I'm that old, I've been coaching for almost 20 years, it's amazing. Um, but the messages from all the young men who I've been able to associate with through this great game that have had just as big of an impact on my life as I've had on theirs. But it'll always be about the players. It always has been. It always will be. We will assemble a staff that is committed to serving and developing. We want people who give and don't take. It's not about how much can you take, it's about how much can you give. Recruiting here will start at home. It already has. New Orleans has great football, in the high schools and the local surrounding area. And I can promise you we will darken the door of every one of them before I leave this area. Um, we want the best to stay here at home. The beautiful thing is we have a national brand now too. And so we have the opportunity to go out and attract the best of the best in all areas. And while I want the best from New Orleans to stay at home, um, we have the opportunity to attract the best nationally as well. And we will do uh, a great job in turning over every rock to find who fits the culture of Tulane and wants to achieve championship level football. The mission of our program, it really does not change. Some of these things are similar and they come with me. We will develop men of character who will earn their degree, they will win championships, and they'll make a positive community impact at large. Our vision is to win conference championships. Winners win, and I'm a winner, and we're going to win. I told the young, young men in the team meeting yesterday that uh, some of my exit meetings with our players at Troy, and I stayed for a couple of days when maybe they would have liked for me to get here, but I needed to hug some necks and shake some hands and shed a few tears with the guys. And then one or two of them, uh, they might have wanted to punch me at first, but we ended up making up. What I, told, what I tell all my guys is, look, you don't want to fight me because I, I don't fight fair. I'm going to win. <laughs> but our vision here is we're going to win conference championships. We're going to win bowl games. I'm telling you right now, I'm speaking into existence. We're going to make the college football playoff, and we're going to win it. And we're going to sell out this stadium every time we play it. We need your help. The young men that work so tremendously hard to put a good product on the field, um, they need your support in every way. They feed off your energy when you're at the game. If the stadium's full, I can promise you they're going to play with just a little extra juice. And we've got a great home venue. Um, Yulman Stadium is a fantastic venue to play home football games on this campus, and we need it rocking every time we play here. And when people come to play here, they need to know they're going home with a loss. All right? And, yeah, that's y'all. <clears throat> the culture of our program, it's my job to cast what that looks like. It's the player's job to bring it to life. The locker room makes that re a reality. But the culture of our program is going to be built on four core values that will travel with me. And they are attitude, toughness, discipline, and love. And I'll briefly tell you from my perspective, each one, the only disability in life is a bad attitude. Everybody in our program is going to have a great attitude every day. We're way too fortunate to get to do what we do. The old Charles Swindoll poem, life is 10% what happens and 90% how I respond to it. We're going to control that 90% really well and have a great attitude with how we attack things daily. 
We will be mentally and physically tough, and there will be no team tougher than we ever play. That will not happen. That is not an option. We will be disciplined. All right, we will delay short-term gratification for long-term growth. The pain of discipline or the pain of regret, we will have discipline in our program. And the most important one that will be in our program every day is love. Love is an action, not a feeling. It is a sacrifice. You have to do something for others to love them. And to, know, to love someone, you have to know their story. And I cannot wait to get to know our players and what makes them tick so we can make them their best. But I love each and every young man I've ever coached. Even the ones that are knuckleheads sometimes, we still love them. And I cannot wait to love on these guys here and help build that culture around those four core values. We will play the game with edge and with attention to detail. Tulane will not beat Tulane. Our offense will be explosive and physical. Last year, we, when I took the job at Troy, we were in the hundreds and everything in the country on offense, and now we're in the 30s or the 40s in two years. It took a little time, but we are explosive and we're physical, and we run the ball when we want to run the ball, and when you start to play the run, we're going to come over the top and throw it by you. The defense will be attacking and aggressive. You'll see 11 hats to the ball a whole lot because that's the standard. And the way we play in the kicking game will be very sound. We will be very thorough with how we play in the kicking game, and our guys will be well coached in that area. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for being here today. Our family cannot wait to connect and engage with the campus community, uptown, the city of New Orleans, and the state of Louisiana. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Coach. At this time, we'll open it up to media questions for those in attendance. Joe and Connor are equipped with microphones. And uh, just a reminder, Coach here remembers some of you in the media, but not all. So please remember to state your name and affiliation before asking your question. So who's first? Uh, my name is Zorn. My name is Fletcher Mackle. I work at WDSU-TV here in New Orleans. Welcome back. Um, a prominent person here told me that when they were going after you, they burned the boats, that you were it and there was no one else. There was no fallback. So I think they got their guy. Everything you just said was obviously impressive. Was there a moment that made this the right place for you, a person, something that when it went from curiosity and intrigue to an actual decision when you said, this is it, and you told your family or you decided with your family it's time to go back to New Orleans? Yeah, um, when the call came that there was going to be an opportunity to have this conversation, you, it always starts with is there interest, yes or no? And um, those answers are usually kind of more like maybe or no when you're a head coach because you're not really in pursuit of anything else. You're always where your feet are. Um, but when Tulane called, the answer was yes, I could be interested in that. And as I found out more about um, the vision and the plan for the future here and the commitment to sustained excellence, Fletcher, that became uh, more clear to me that this could be a good fit and an alignment with my family and what we're about. Um, and so uh, anytime you move a wife and four kids, there's got to be a lot of things, that boxes that get checked, just like they wanted to check boxes on who the next head coach was. And I'm um, honored that we were able to get that done and grateful for it because this is a fantastic place with fantastic people and it's about people. And um, so, uh, yeah, as the process kind of worked through itself, I would say um, Thursday night, Friday morning, it was, we would like to do this if this is at all possible. Right next to you, uh, Garland Gill and Fox State Sports here in New Orleans. Um, from when you left this program as a, a position coach, to now you're here, and th the last few years have been some of the best in, in Tulane history. Um, how appealing was it that there is now a culture of winning and winning big time games? How appealing was that to you to not have to come to a program? Sometimes that you have to rebuild. Th this thing is, is, is looking strong right now. Yeah, they've had great momentum um, from the last two years, and that matters. It's hard to get momentum started. 
Um, I like to share the adage of, you know, it's hard to get, on, get to the top, it's harder to stay there. And it takes a lot of things to stay there. And complacency is a killer. Uh, as soon as you feel like you've done something, if you relax, uh, you're going to get everybody's best shot. And we will get everybody's best shot. We experienced that where I'm coming from, too. We get everybody's best shot this year because they knew we had kind of arrived. And um, no different, we will get everybody's best shot. The good news is they're going to get ours, too. Hey, Coach, Jared Paul Joseph, WGNO. I know you said you're done reflecting, but given the, in, the roots you have here and having the family ties as well, how much have you thought about it or how much has it meant to you mentally and emotionally to have this full circle moment? Yeah, uh, we've got dear friends um, that were our friends here 10 years ago uh, here today. Um, we've got former players here today. Kenny Welcome's up here. I almost didn't recognize him. He's lost so much weight. Um, but uh, that's a good thing um, for, his, for his health, probably. But, um, but so um, it's, it's tremendous. There's, you know, there's a lot of introductions, but there's probably just as many um, it's good to see you again. And so for us, familiarity is nice. We're very comfortable uh, here in the city. Um, we loved it. Uh, going reverse to Kenny. Last time when I moved here, I think I put on 50 pounds, though. So I'm going to have to watch what I eat these next few weeks and make sure I run every morning. I, I have another one, Fletcher, again, sorry, yeah. um, to double dip. Um, people, I think, want to know, what is your timeline? Because obviously recruiting has started. Yeah. We've all seen the social media posts about what's happening and who's going where. Can you maybe kind of just give us a quick timeline of when you plan on getting boots on the ground and keeping players, getting into the portal, things like that. Hang on, what's, what's the portal? What is that? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, um, yeah. And social media posts, I don't know what you're talking about. No, um, no uh, look, here, here's how this transition will happen for me. Um, I, I'm here. My staff that's been at Troy, they will not leave until the bowl game is completed. No one there will accept a job here until the bowl game is over. It's their job to finish the mission with those young men there. And I'm not going to extend an offer to a new coach there. Uh, while that may hurt me in the short term here, um, I'll win out in the long term by doing it the right way. And so for us, <laughs> for us to be um, fully transparent, while I'm walking into this, and it's my job to quickly connect and engage with our current players and the staff that's still here, it's my staff's job to finish the job where they are. And um, we love those young men so deeply that uh, I would not be who I said I am or say I am as a man if I went to go um, steal that staff immediately away from those kids today. And so. Uh, it's hard. It takes a lot of work because I'm not sleeping a whole lot. Um, but I'm here. Uh, I met with um, the, the staff that is still behind here right now. There is a lot that's in flux, trying to get your hands on who's where and who's there and what's coming and what's going is a little bit challenging right now. Um, I know this. Um, I would like to, I'm, I'm reaching out to all the young men that have maybe entered the portal or whatever. I'd like to sit down and have a conversation with all of them. doesn't mean they're all going to stay. Um, but I think when they find out what we're going to be about here as a program, uh, if they want um, to be loved and pushed and developed to be their best, we'll have a shot to keep some of them. And so the guys that want to be here, they're going to win championships. We're going to do that. And um, we'll put a staff together. I, when I met with um, the leadership team here, I told them when I hire people, I measure twice and cut once. Uh, where I was before, I made my first new hire two weeks after I took the job. I think my chancellor that hired me thought, who, do you know how to do this job? And, but I'd rather get it done right than get it done fast. And um, it may take a little time. And um, it matters to get it done as quickly as possible, but it also matters to take care of the kids that I've been coaching where I was coaching before coming here.